friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're starting a new vlog series which is ironic because it's about finishing book series. <laughs> so the name for this series, total credit to one of my patrons, Taylor, because I did not come up with it, but it's called Series Wipeout. And every month we are gonna be finishing off some series. A lot of you will know one of my biggest reading goals this year is to get down to only 26 ongoing series because I think I have about 16 that I won't be able to finish so that plus 10 others is what I'm going for so series wipeout is basically going to be making me do that <laughs> so every month we are going to be finishing a series so I'll give you a little review of what I thought of the first book and then we'll read the other books in the series but this first episode is going to be a little bit different last year I uploaded a video talking about every series I was in the middle of and in the description was a poll for you guys to vote on what series you wanted me to make progress in and so we're going to be reading the series that you guys chose for me to read. So excited. <laughs> Now you were very kind because you chose some of the only series where I only had the last book left to read. So we're gonna be finishing three series. Not gonna be making progress, we've been finishing three series in this video, which is a great start. We're starting here on 41, so we've gotta finish 15. <laughs> 15 in total, and this will get us three of the way there. So I'm super happy, you guys are in super kind. And I was actually really surprised to see what you voted for. So let's chat about how many votes we got. So almost 600 of you filled out the poll, which is kind of crazy. And I said that you could pick up to three books each. So that's why the numbers are gonna be quite big for how many of you voted for each of these. But first, this first one, 44% of you voted for. It had 254 votes. So most of you wanted me to read this and hear what I thought about it as good as dead by holly jackson <laughs> this is a place for legends okay so i am so excited to read this um this has been one of my favorite series ever it is by far my favorite ya mystery series i think it's absolutely incredible we're following pip who solves cases in her local town and in this one i believe she has a stalker who is sending her letters saying who will look for you when you're the one who disappears so she is the case that she is trying to solve in this one and i'm just so excited to see you know where this series ends up where pip ends up as a character and to read a mystery because i love a good mystery so that's the first one that you voted for then coming in at number two with 214 votes was actual age eve brown which i was kind of uh not anticipating seeing because i don't read a ton of romance so i didn't think that would be something you voted for but i suppose it is a super popular series so in this we're following the brown sisters and each of the books and them having a romance and in this we're following eve who's the baby of the family i don't really know much about the plot but i've really enjoyed the first two you know tally hibbit is kind of one of the only romance authors i've really enjoyed reading from so i'm so excited i really wasn't expecting to pick this i thought you'd pick mainly fantasy so i thought this was a really fun you know one to put in the mix and and then finally, you guys, um, <laughs> the final one, 31% of you voted for with 180 votes. The King of Crows. Please do not. This is an intense request from my heart. I am not meaning to shame you. This is the King of Crows. It's the King of Crows by Libba Bray. So this is the final in the Diviners series where we're following these, like this Scooby gang of friends who are diviners, who have these special powers in 1920s New York. And there's there's been this character called the King of Crows who's been in it from the first book, like subtly, um, building up to him being the big villain in this last book. And I loved the first two in the series, but the third one I didn't love. So I am fucking nervous. I'm so nervous to read this one because yeah, not a lot of people have loved this one. It hasn't been super loved, but I'm excited to be back with like our cast of characters in the 1920s atmosphere again. So yeah but i've put off reading this like a bajillion times like many of you know i've been supposed to read it like 20 times and haven't read it so those are the three books that we're going to be reading in this vlog and i'm super excited to see how they're all going to turn out i'm going to start with as good as dead because i can't contain myself and i need to see where this book goes so i'm going to start with this one and i'll check in with you in a bit what the fuck what the fuck i'm sorry I'm about to sue Holly Jackson for fucking emotional... I... <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> 
So I was waiting until halfway through this book to talk to you because the first 100 pages were very slow. I wasn't quite into them. I was like, oh my god, this is not good. And then it's picked up. It's picked up, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm loving it. But here's the thing. I'm on page 246. When I tell you... <laughs> The plot twist that just happened. This, 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 this is the kind of thing I, I feel like should happen at the end of the book. <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. What? We've still got half of the book, over half of the book to go. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Holly Jackson, I'm about to sue you. They put me through purgatory. Yeah. Mm. They put me through hell on this earth. Okay, so obviously this is the third book in the series. So we're going off vibes in <laughs> my check-ins for these books. Listen, okay, so in this, she has a stalker. She's trying to figure out what is happening. And like, I am emotionally attacked. I feel tense. Like, the route that this is going down is so different. Firstly, Pip is like, she's been through more shit than I think a human can handle. So she's a little bit losing it. She's like, she's conscious that she's losing it, but she's losing it. So where in the first books you have this very like, you know, trustworthy like main character who is like very kind of to the point, knows what she's investigating, knows what she wants. Although she has like ups and downs, like she's got a, like a what the oldies would refer to as like a good head on her shoulders. This one, the head skewer, like she, she's losing it. And so that's an interesting element where you're not sure how much you can trust what she's saying, what she's thinking, etc. But holy shit, the route this has gone down, I can't even tell you the kind of general route of investigation we're on now, because I think it's a spoiler. But like, I, when I tell you, I'm on live to my patrons right now, we're doing reading sprints, and when I tell you, I got, like, I, I put the book down, and I just looked at all of them, like this. <laughs> the woman was too stunned to speak. I just know the second half is gonna be crazy. I feel like it's gonna be level, like, no exit levels of tense. I feel sick. I'm gonna throw up. I actually can't take this. I actually can't take this. This is so good. This is so good. <laughs> oh my god, because here's the thing. We just had like a little, a little series of investigations and I was like, I know what the fuck's going on here. And very rarely do you feel a step ahead of Pip in the investigations, but she was, her and Ravi, her friend, were... <laughs> <laughs> we're coming to the wrong conclusions. I was like, bitches, fucking get your goggles on and listen, let's read this shit again because you're not catching on to what's going on here. I still think I'm right, but I did not expect this to happen. What the hell? I feel very attacked. Relax. So I know I'm right, but I think I not. I was supposed to know I'm right, but now I can't even, I can't even take it. What is gonna happen? Oh my God, I need to finish this whole book tonight. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I've got 250 pages left. I need to finish this whole ass book tonight. So I'm on sprints with my patrons the next couple hours. I've got to get up fairly early in the morning so I've got to drive. <laughs> I'm gonna drive um, to the doctor's appointment. I've got quite a ways away from me at a different hospital. But like, sleep is for the week. Sleep is for the week. This book is so good. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna go carry on reading it. I'm gonna go finish it on the live of my patrons. And, um... <laughs> then, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna go cry. I actually, I think I need to pace for a bit because I actually, I actually am gonna throw up. Okay, let's go find out what happens next. Um, 
I don't even think, I don't think, hang on, you're not quite right. Let's prop you up a bit. I don't think I'm emotionally ready. I'm not even holding up right to talk about this book. Like, I, you guys. <laughs> I remember thinking, I'm about to beat this bitch up. So, um, fuck. <laughs> Five stars. Five stars. I think this may... Whoa, is this my favourite in the series? This is my favourite book in the series. And A Good Girl's Guide to Murder was my sixth favourite book last year. So I think that that shows you how much I loved this. This book is fucking bonkers. Like, I can't explain to you enough how crazy this book is. I was not, I finished it last night, yesterday afternoon. I could not talk to you. Mm -mm, that was not happening. Because, <laughs> oh my god, like, I can't, I can't talk to you. I was sobbing. The end of this book got me. Like, okay, so without, this isn't a spoiler, but the end of the book is a little bit, some people, I've read some reviews that weren't spoilery either, so I can say it, that, that called the ending unresolved. But I love that. I love when there's a little, these characters we love so much, I think it would feel wrong to shut the book and you're like, that's it, you know? You're like, that's the end. A book that, that lets you imagine what the future holds, but whilst fucking ripping your heart out and stomping on it, I I really like it. So, I mean, I <laughs> fucking hell. This book is crazy. Very similar levels to No Exit. It kind of spirals into of craziness and it really goes down a route that you could never predict. Like, I could have never have guessed that this is where this book was gonna go. You guys, it is fantastic. <laughs> I was so paranoid when reading this book. Like, I'd, I'd shut it and I'd be like, well, this whole series is so into like, texting and, and internet searches and emails and like, like people's digital traces and people, people say like, I was like, oh my god, like, can I Google, like, the time my post office shuts, or are the police gonna come around to my house, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I was, like, <laughs> so paranoid while I was reading this book. I can't trust them. They don't know what they're doing. Holly Jackson is a fucking superstar. This series is the best YA mystery series out there. There, I'm saying it, I'm saying it. I have asserted that position. Like, I can't emphasize you enough how good a writer Holly Jackson is. And I love when over a series, the first one is fucking bomb, but you can still see a progression of a writer. And this, this book feels so ambitious and it pulls it off. It's amazing how the mystery in this is spun. Like little details that you learn on page 100 or page 200 come back at the end and like, <laughs> blow everything apart. Do you know what I mean? Like little details that you think are just window dressing, like details of the mystery, like suddenly that is so important. And you're like, wow, that was planted so well. Like it's just so well done. And sometimes the way I feel about this book and this series, sometimes you can love a book or a series so much that you can just kind of sink into it. Like sometimes when I'm reading it at the moment, I really notice a book that I love because I don't have to like set timers for myself for reading. Like otherwise when I'm reading, I typically set like Pomodoro timers when I'm reading, like I'll read 25 minutes then give myself a five minute break. But this book, you could not pry it out of my hands. Like for the last this much, I would say of the book, I could not stop. You were not stopping me. I was just laying there like this. Like it was, just incredible and I am so excited to read anything that Holly Jackson puts out in the future. Like I I am just so excited. What a great way to start 2022. Finishing a series, tick tick, tick tick tick, and one of my favorite series ever and it being five stars. You let God, it go because you wouldn't have God, nobody. Thank you, God. Oh my God, thank you, God. God thank you, okay. God. Crazy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Honestly, the twist this takes halfway through. I can't, I can't explain to you how good it is. So if this is your push to start this series, start a Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, like, please do it because this was incredible. I'm hoping to read Killjoy this month, which is like a prequel short story. I need to get ahead on some of my other reading first, but if I have time, I'm gonna fit that in. And then that truly is the series like shut for me, like done. This is amazing. This is amazing. And now, <laughs> We've got to read The King of Crows by Libba Bray. So listen, I'm very scared of this book. It's long. The audiobook is 22 hours long. 
that's just not me. Like, that's just not the person I am. But we've got to, we've got to read it. <laughs> we've got to read it. And then we finish the series. So I think I need to go read like a recap tins or a recap of the series. Because I, I feel like there's a lot of details I cannot remember from the end of this book. Or the last book, sorry. And then we'll start it. Now I am excited to go back into this New York world again. But I've just heard so many not good things that I don't have the highest hopes. But let's see. Let's, let's go and see. <laughs> Okay, so I'm about 100 pages in to King of Crows. I've read that much. Whoa, it feels like I've read a lot more than that. This book is like 500 something pages. That is... It's a bit long, Libba. It's a bit, it's a bit long. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Like, it's, it's, it's quite good. But I feel like this book was always going to hinge on how it ends. On how it ends the whole series. It's fine at the moment, but we haven't gone into the meat of everything. I'm enjoying being back in, like, the 1920s world. I'm enjoying being back with, like, the Scooby gang of characters. I think it's, I think it started off pretty strong. I think it started off, like, straight into the action, which is kind of what you want. I will say, the King of Crows is a villain that the whole series has been building up to. So kind of from the beginning, you get the sense of this character being there and you know that he's gonna be like the end villain um and you have like other villains of the week monsters of the week essentially <laughs> like in all the other books you have an individual villain and the king of crows is kind of this pervading character across the whole series and like i don't know if i'm convinced of him i don't know if i am scared of him at all <laughs> He's not really giving me anything. He's a little bit boring and I'm just not feeling it. So like the King of Crows, not, not really bothered, which is what the whole thing hinges on. Me anytime the King of Crows turns up. I don't want to be a bitch, but you guys are really boring. I will say I'm pissed off. I'm still angry. I'm still so angry that Libba Bro writes an entire book based on Henry and Ling to make me fall in love with them and to make them my favourite characters in the whole in the whole series by a country mile. And then they're just like kind of ignored. They're just kind of ignored for the rest of the series. And uh, it, <laughs> it, it's outrageous. Frankly, it's outrageous. Like they're barely notable. They're barely doing anything. Theta, okay, she's a cool gal, but like, She's nothing on Henry and Ling and their dynamic. Their dynamic was one of the purest friendships. Like, I, when do you see a friendship like that? You don't. Anyway, this isn't spoilers for the second book, by the way, because like, you know, who cares? It's like the synopsis of it. But honestly, outrageous that she makes me that attached to those characters and then they're just irrelevant. How can you do that? What is the purpose of that? I just, <laughs> I'm so angry about that, but, the book is fine. I'm listening to the audiobook, which I've never done before, and I'm enjoying it. Like, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not loving it. I think I got so attached to some of those characters in Lair of Dreams, and I loved the route that Lair of Dreams went down, but I think I lost a lot of love for this series in the third book, so now it's just something I'm enjoying reading, but I don't feel particularly passionate about, if that makes sense. I don't know. I also feel like the whole, as such I love the 1920s setting in New York, I feel like the story hasn't progressed that much. I almost wish we could have come out of New York for one of the books in the series, like the second or third. I feel like we should have gone somewhere else because it's gotten a bit stagnant and I feel like it's relying on that a bit too much. So I feel like it would have worked better if we'd exited New York for a period and then we're back in it. Also add to the fact that one of my favourite characters from the start of the series is dead. Not a spoiler, like you know people are gonna die. But one of my favourite characters is dead and so like I don't even have them to like get me excited. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about it. I'm gonna read some more and I'm gonna tidy my room and listen to audiobook and hopefully I'll make some good progress today. I'd like to even try and finish it today because I, I really want to speed up my reading. It's the 20th today and I've, I, no, it's the 21st. Oh my God, I've only finished four books so far. That's not very good for me. Like that's not very good. January hasn't been a great reading month. I've kind of been getting on my feet in other areas of life. So I would like to try and finish this tonight. I'm not doing much else today. So I'm going to try and rely on the audiobook quite a lot, but the audiobook is very long. <laughs> like I'm listening to it on, I'm listening to it on three times speed and I've got six hours left. And it's currently a quarter past three in the afternoon. <laughs> so wish me luck um but yeah i'm gonna go just listen to the audiobook for a bit which obviously will take me down to 1.8 speed which we have 10 hours left <laughs> anyway i'm gonna go read some more and i'll check in with you when i've probably read like another 150 200 pages Good a day a 
that's that need to start the rebuilding of life. The roads that lay open are many. When the old one's gone under the knife, and I can feel the sun on my skin beginning to thaw. I'm gonna be honest. I don't even want to talk. I don't want to talk about this book. I've been putting off filming this clip. I've been putting off reading more of it. Here's the thing. It's not bad. <laughs> It's not bad. I'm just a bit bored. Like, it's long. Uh, this book does not need to be this long. It's like I'm reading it and I'm getting nowhere. Like, it's like a pasta dish. Like, you know when you're eating pasta and you're like, it just keeps on going. There just, there keeps being more of it. <laughs> Tea is so, it's so piping hot. I've spilled it all over my dress. What now? It's not bad. It's not, it's fine. Like, the characters, some of them are going on interest, well... Interesting things are happening. I'm getting very close. Interesting things are happening. I'm on like page 350-ish. Uh, no, I'm not. Page 320. Yeah, like interesting things are happening, but I don't feel like any of our characters are like developing at all. They're just waiting. Like this feels like a book of waiting. Why are we waiting? That we could have sped it up a little bit. Like, <laughs> should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. So I don't feel like there are interesting character arcs and this has become so character focused and like nothing's happening. Like it's taking far too long. Something I always loved about the Diviner series was like how it would like almost zoom out on New York and like so you'd have something happen to our characters and then we'd learn what was happening to like ordinary people like on the other side of the city or something. Like it always took the whole population into account which i think some fantasy doesn't do <laughs> like it kind of like ignores other people and like the impact that it has on them but the whole time i'm reading this book i'm not getting excited about reading this book i'm getting exci excited about other books i'm getting excited about all the books i can read once this book is done i've already read four books it is the 20 what is it the 23rd is it the 23rd it's the 24th of january you guys, I've read four books and it's all because I was putting off reading this book for ages and now it's taking me ages to read it. So like, it's a scam. It's a scam. And I just want to finish it so I can read other stuff because I genuinely believe this kind of mini slump I've started the year in is going to be gone once I finish this book. So listen, it's not like it's bad. It's not bad. But depending on how it ends, it could be anywhere from like a 3.5 maybe more a three to a two now it's much more likely to be a three i don't think it's bad then it's next like to be 2.5 then it has a minuscule chance of being a two but it still has a chance do you know what i mean so it's much more skewed towards three but i don't know something about it the pace is just not keeping me interested it's not keeping me vibing like i'm bored i'm bored so i'm gonna try and finish well I'm not going to finish it tonight because I'm going out for dinner now. But I'm going to get as close to finishing it as I can. Hopefully I'll have time to read a little bit tonight. Because, yeah, it just it just needs to get finished. It needs to get finished. I need to move on to other stuff because I'm not really feeling it. And it's not fair to the book because I've kind of already mentally checked out, you know? Okay, so we have a lot to talk about because a lot of reading... <laughs> That's so good. You guys, I finished it. I finished King of Crows. And it was rough. It was rough. It, it was rough. Dear God, where did you go? I gave it two stars in the end, and it was rough. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I haven't, I've delayed talking about this because it's hard. I can't believe this is finished. I can't believe I finally finished this series. I can't tell you. It's very satisfying to finish the series. So I'm glad I've read it. I'm glad I finished the book, you know, finished the whole arc, but the pacing in this, oh, my seals, my favorite bookmark was in there. The pacing in this was off. It was not just off, it was like sour, sour. The pacing was sour. It was so boring. The second half of this was so boring and you're just constantly, you're waiting for the end, you're waiting for the end. There's like 150 pages of this book where we're in this one place which obviously i can't say but we're like in this one place we're stuck there sorry about the weird lighting oh well yeah we're stuck in this place and like nothing happens. 
We're just walking around in circles. We're just walking around in circles. And then you're waiting for like this big climactic end fight, 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 let's fight, you know? Um, the whole series has been building up to with the King of Crows and it just like whimpered out. It whimpered out. The ending, <laughs> you're expecting me to believe that that is how that ends. No. You're gonna look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? Am I wrong? It was like Libba Bray didn't know how to end it all of a sudden. She didn't know how to end the big end scene, which like doesn't make any sense because the other books, I think they've all been pretty good. Like the ending has been pretty good. The ending to this was not satisfying at all. Not satisfying in the slightest. Now, did I cry? Yes, I did cry a few times at the end because Libba Bray's writing is still amazing like it's so beautiful it's so emotional it's so complex like her writing is really good in terms of the language in terms of making you feel something like i felt something like i cried a couple times i was so attached to these characters but this book was off like i i can't even begin to explain it to you the reason it's not one star is because i cried like i felt something like there were moments i enjoyed but it was so fucking boring. It was boring. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, I know I sh I don't want to be dunking on this book. Like, I don't want to be saying this shit. It felt like Libra Bray should have gone back to the drawing board with, like, the last book in the series and should have written something different. I don't, I don't feel like this was a fitting end to the series. I'm kind of gonna forget it exists, but I'm glad I finished it. But, like, what a disappointment. What a shame. Like, it's very sad very very sad also the king of crows let's just talk about this for a second the king of crows is in the whole series this isn't a spoiler like he's fair from the beginning the most boring main villain he had no spice i don't care what anyone says he's boring he's straight up stupid like he's stupid he's stupid he's stupid he's stupid, he's stupid. where's the flavor where's the flavor in this i spent like three weeks of my life reading that in what world but anyway i am now actually over already over halfway through actor eg brown i know i should have spoken to you <laughs> in between but like i just i just needed something else and let me tell you what a tonic for the soul what a what a outstanding but no it's not that it's outstanding but i'm reading it and i'm like thank I'm reading something that isn't King of Crows. I'm reading something that isn't King of Crows. I am reading something that isn't King of Crows. It makes me so happy. So in this, we're following the last brown sister, Eve, who is kind of like, you know, she's like the baby of the family. She's been babied. She doesn't really have a career. She doesn't have a job. She just like uses the trust fund, floats about, but she has to get a job and she stumbles across this B&B &B and it's like cold, distant owner, Jacob, and like, it's enemies to lovers. It's Grump Sunshine. Grump Sunshine. Grump Sunshine. Can I just tell you Grump Sunshine? We all know from the Love Hypothesis, apparently, I think every romance I need to read needs to be Grump Sunshine. I don't think I'm gonna like it if it's not Grump Sunshine. Like, apparently that is my shit. I don't know why. I don't know why, but apparently... Something about it. Something about it. Guess me. <laughs> I'm on page 200. Like, I've read mostly the audiobook. I've really been enjoying the audiobook. And I've really been enjoying their relationship. It's like, obviously, it's romance. It's not a spoiler. That Well, nothing's happened yet. They're kind of just, they both fancy each other. But I love that kind of slip from finding each other annoying to, to really liking each other and falling for each other. And the other one doesn't know. And they think they don't really like each other. And they're like, are we friends? Like, are we even friends? Like, do we like each other? Like, oh! It's so cute. Talia Hibbert can write a good romance. I will say there's something about the narration style that I feel like I've stumbled across that like is not my favorite. Like it's a bit like, oh, I'm funny. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. It's something that was always niggled me throughout the whole series and I don't really know how to put it into words, but it's like something to do with the third person narration style with the style of writing don't necessarily mesh for me. Like it's almost like it wants to be first person the way that it's got the, the humor in the story. But let me tell you, I don't give a fuck. I'm reading this so fast. You can't stop me. I'm back bitches. I'm fucking back. I'm never gonna be stopped reading ever again. I am absolutely loving the experience of reading it. Is it like the best book in the world? No. It's probably gonna be a four star, but I'm gonna be really happy that I've finished off this series. So I'm gonna finish this fucking vlog that's been going on for a month. <laughs> today it's ending today it's ending i've had enough i am gonna go do some housework and things and i'm gonna listen to the audiobook of this and i will probably come back to you this evening late this afternoon having finished it with my final thoughts okay so i finished actually brown i have finished three 
series in this video. I'm so happy. So yeah, I enjoyed this. It was a romance. It was like, here's the thing. This book was not surprising to me anyway, because having read the previous two Brown Sisters romances, like I knew what I was getting. You know what I mean? I knew what I was setting myself up for. So it wasn't surprising in any way. I don't, what is this? I don't really have any like groundbreaking thoughts on it because it was like, yeah, that was what I expected. But I really liked the romance. I thought they were very sweet and wholesome together. And Grump Sunshine, it does something to me. I don't know why. <laughs> At this point, Trix, the dolls are the dolls. <laughs> I really, really love it. I love how they brought out the best in each other. And there was so much conversation about like discovering different parts of you and loving those parts of you with so much care and gentleness. And their relationship was just really, really lovely. And it was hot and it was great and it was wonderful, whatever. Like, you know, it's a romance. <laughs> I will say, as I read romance after romance, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the third act conflict. I know, I know this is an ongoing discussion within romance communities and whatever. And I know like some people are like, <laughs> oh, romances need a third act conflict. You know, they need something to go wrong right at the end. But I don't know if that's true. I just find it predictable and I don't, I'm not a fan of it. I'd rather the romance takes longer to f come to fruition and has a few stumbling blocks along the way then have this kind of shoehorned in third act conflict. Because to me, I was like, you guys, you wouldn't, this wouldn't be happening. Like we'd gotten to a point in our communication and like understanding each other, that this just would not be happening. And I just don't feel like it's needed. So that aspect of it, I was like, you know, do we need this? But I'm still gonna give it four stars. Like I still really enjoyed it. I would say I've enjoyed all three of the Brown Sisters books pretty much similar amounts. Like I think I gave them all four stars. Maybe I gave Danny Brown 3.5. I think I gave Danny Brown 3.5, but both this and Chloe Brown four. And you know, Tally Hibbit is just a, like probably one of the only romance authors along with Ali Hazelwood that I'm gonna pick up every time they put something out, like without fail. I'll always pick up her books. So it was a success. And listen, we finished another series. So that's the end of this vlog. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we finished three series. We're on our way. Now it only took me the whole month. <laughs> Apologies that there hasn't been that many vlogs in January. We're now in February, I know, don't worry. But um, yeah, apologies there wasn't that many vlogs in January. It was just a bit of a strange month, but I'm already feeling like better and like more like myself. So there'll be a lot of vlogs coming in February, hopefully. I feel like I'm on the reading train again. Um, but if you've gotten to the end of this video, comment a musical note emoji, because Eve loves music. Comment that down below if you've gotten to the end of this video. Let me know what book series also you want to feature in this vlog series. So what ones you want to have their own vlog? Um, I already have the first two planned because I have all the books for them. So I know what the first two will be. But other than that, I haven't planned it out. If you kind of know what series I'm in the middle of, you can let me know down below which of those you want a whole vlog for. Thank you so, so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of your support as always. And I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!